Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Blizzard released the talent calculator and the spell changes and stuff for all the stuff coming with Legion, and I'm going to be discussing my thoughts on Enhancement Shaman specifically. Now, I highly recommend, the link is in the description, I highly recommend going through it and looking at all the classes because they look absolutely nuts. Paladins look crazy. Survival Hunters are melee again, they look so cool. Outlaw looks nuts. <laughs> Just the classes are like all being overhauled, it looks so cool. Now I'm just gonna start from the 15 talents, gonna go across the board and then go down. Now I would like to say that these things are obviously subject to change because it got released and the game is still almost a year away, so. So, starting with Windsong. So on a 30 second cooldown, immediately attack somebody and basically it just deals damage but it increases your attack speed by 50% for 15 seconds. That's quite a bit, especially for an enhanced shaman. Now, I think right now, uh, your damage, you get buffed based on your attack speed, so the faster you hit, the more damage you deal. So this would actually be amazing. Spiritual Resonance increases the Maelstrom generation provided by Rockbiter and Feral Spirits. I believe Rockbiter gives like 15 or 25. It generates 15. Now, Stormstrike takes 60 Maelstrom and Lava Lash takes what? 30. It says Lunar Power, but it means Maelstrom. 30. So you'd have to hit Rockbiter twice and then you get one Lava Lash. But there are procs and stuff for Stormstrike to incur no cooldown and reduce it by 50%. That one's pretty good too. Fists of Stone on a 30 second cooldown instantly. It basically, it looks like it buffs your attack, your attack damage. So you get increased crit and all damage dealt by 5% for only 10 seconds. But it reduces your attack speed by 50% and move speed by 50%. I really don't think this is viable. I mean, right now as the numbers stand, those numbers are too small for the like downsides to it, to where you can't, basically can't move and attack. You would have to hit really, really hard to have those downsides. So as it stands, that is bleh. Now these ones look cool. Gust of Wind, it basically like pushes you forward. Like if you were a druid, you were in travel form and use a little wild charge. That's what I, I'm thinking on 15 second cooldown. And Feral Charge, it's basically like a charge. You have to be in Ghost Wolf form to use it but you leap at your opponent from 25 yards away, which is about this, the range of your kick, so eh, not that bad. And it deals damage too, that's that's the cool part. This is pretty cool, it's on a 30 second cooldown. Wind Rush Totem. Now totems have, most totems anyway, have uh, more increased health, so I think it's like a base of 2% of your max HP, which is friggin' phenomenal about the friggin' time. Increases the movement speed of all allies within 10 yards by 60% for five seconds. 5 seconds isn't that long, but 60% is quite a bit, so if you wanted to get somewhere or get your team out of somewhere, you are gone. That looks really good for like TSGs and um, like healer killer comps. I find it so funny that they made Cap Totem an option, like anyone's going to choose it. And it's it still says, someone's an air totem with 5 health. Like, as it stands right now, that's <laughs> this literally is never an option ever. <laughs> when you could choose anything else like earth grab totem which if it's your other option it's totally worth it on 30 second cooldown cat totems on a 45 30 second cooldown it will slow people like an earth bind or and root them also good for the healer killer comps now this one is interesting this is new this is cool it's called a voodoo totem on a, on a 30 second cooldown a 30 second cooldown it basically wherever you place it it pulses and aoe hexes people <laughs> that's pretty cool now, my buddy actually said something that if you place it and you have to wait five seconds before it pulses the first time, it might not be that good. You may have to do it in a stun or something. Um, but if you drop it and then it immediately pulses, like that's freaking awesome. Especially if you can like group them up like on Dalaran sewers or something when you all go behind the box and you drop it and it hexes everybody. That'd be kind of crazy. That's that's a game changer right there. Now, this is interesting. They changed lightning shield from a passive thing that you just apply to an ability on a minute cooldown. You surround yourself with lightning, obviously, for 15 seconds, and it deals damage. It says to one enemy, so it doesn't seem that good. Ancestral Swiftness, it doesn't let you do the uh, the instant cast or something, which is not that big of a deal, but increases your haste by 10% and attack speed by 10%. Pretty good. All upsides. This is actually pretty huge. Landslide. Rockbiter also increases your weapon, or enhances your weapon, increasing your attack power by 20%. That's pretty big. That's a straight up damage increase and it enhances your weapon and it's something that you can spam because it doesn't cost anything and it generates Maelstrom. Now what makes that so good is because when you enhance your weapons, when you're using abilities that in then enhance your weapons like Flame Tongue and stuff and this one, you have a chance with each like hit to enhance your allies weapons as well doing nature damage. So if you can have both of your weapons enhanced and it's proccing a lot, whoever is around you is now dealing a lot more damage. And that's kind of freaking awesome. 
I mean, it, again, it is RNG, but RNG, but Tempest. When Storm Fury is activated, you now gain two Storm Strikes, which are which cost 50% less and trigger no cooldown. Now, what Storm Fury is is basically it's the thing as it explains, but you only get one Storm Strike. Each of your attacks has a whatever chance to cause Storm Fury, resetting the cooldown of Storm Strike, causing it to do, to cost 50% less and trigger no cooldown. This basically just gives you two charges of that, which is pretty good considering it costs 60 and it wouldn't incur a cooldown. So you could do boom, 30, 30, and then do it again, maybe if you have enough Maelstrom. And then Sparrow, Spiritual Affinity just straight up just reduces the cooldown of Feral Spirits by 60 seconds, which puts it on a minute. Now I will say that Feral Spirits no longer actually heal you. They're strictly for buffs. So when you throw them out, they're gonna be dealing damage for 15 seconds only. So reducing the cooldown by a minute might, not, might be pretty good but they increase your haste by 50%, which is absolutely huge, and generate Maelstrom for you. This is the one that they showed us for the um, preview. This looks pretty cool. Sundering costs 60 Maelstrom on 20 second cooldown. You like smash the ground in front of you and pushes everybody aside, basically. That looks pretty cool. To have an extra CC or even just like a knock, that's, that's pretty cool. Now, if it also slowed, like that'd be amazing for like peeling and stuff, or if it made a wall for two seconds, that'd be kind of weird, but that'd be so cool. Fury of Air on a 30 second cooldown costs 20 Maelstrom and 5 per second and it lasts 10 seconds and it basically deals damage and slows people like AOE around you. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean 8 yards isn't that far but if you like jump in the thick of things and you pop that you can start doing some crazy AOE damage and slowing everything which is pretty cool. Crashing Storm. It increases the range of your crash lightning by 4 yards. Now crash lightning is this. It's an ability that you get. Looks absolutely awesome. 5 second cooldown costs 20 maelstrom, it basically like hits in front of you in a cone and if you hit more than one target it increases your, enhances both of your weapons again so that chance on proc thing. And then it causes storm strike and lava lash to deal an additional 75% of your damage to all targets in front of you so you have a chance to just do AoE and then fury of air and then AoE again after 5 seconds, that's so cool. Enhancing both of your weapons. And this one looks really cool too, it's called stone fist strike on a 30 second cooldown. Basically. It's a stun, a five second stun. Now that's awesome. I love this. I finally, if I jump on somebody, I want to have to just drop cap totem and stand there and hope that they're, they're still around or they don't just slap it once and kill it. I can just stun them and then continue beating on them. <laughs> now as it stands, this looks like the most enticing talent of the 90 tree right here. I mean, I want to see that. I want to see the numbers on this. I want to see how good it is and how viable it is because 30 cent, 30% 30 for three seconds isn't really all that much. What if it does cra crazy AOE? There you go. Now I thought this was interesting. They changed the sentence. It's no longer a talent that every, or it's no longer an ability that every shaman gets. It's a level 100 talent on a 10 minute cooldown. It lasts for a minute, but it's a 10 minute cooldown. They didn't really change anything with it. You just turn into an air ascendant and then bypass his armor on a 30 yard range and stuff like that. But it's a huge cooldown apparently. The next one is Feral Kin. Basically the differences between Feral Kin and Feral Spirits is you only get one dog, it lasts twice as long, so for 30 seconds instead of 15 seconds, but it's on a 5 minute cooldown. And it generates just as much haste and maelstrom. I'm pretty sure that these are just tooltip errors and these are supposed to be bigger numbers because from going from 2 minutes to 5 minutes is pretty big to have only 15 seconds extra. So I think they, they're going to change that. And this one's weird, it's, it just deals damage. 20 second cooldowns, it costs 30 maelstrom, it just deals damage and increases your physical and nature damage against them for 10 seconds. It says 775 weapon damage, so it, do, it might actually do quite a bit of damage. And also, it's like an, an initiator. You start with it, and then you just plow damage. Now, this is just enhanced shamans. This is how much has changed for this one spec of one class, and they still have all of the other classes to go through with each spec, and they're all different. They all look so cool. Now, this is the PvP talent calculator. This one is specific to PvP. Now, this instead of like grinding honor for your gear and stuff, this is where you would get your trinket, like as you see here. Now you can either take the trinket or you can take these other abilities like this. They're just other options to, instead of using a trinket, it's just like the first CC that you get hit with, it'll remove it every minute and a half. Or straight up all CC is reduced by 25%. So you have other options, which is pretty cool, but I feel like trinket's sort of a necessity because you need to be able to pick exactly which CC you need to get out of because sometimes you just need to freaking get out of there or stop CC for someone else. I'm pretty sure that these six right here are standard for everybody. But then all of the rest ones change specific to each spec. So train of thought, damage increased by 15% but being attacked will cancel the effect. I don't really see why this is useful in PvP. Increases haste by 15%. Pretty nuts. That looks amazing. Crit chance increased by 30% on targets at or above 80% HP. 
I mean, that does sound nice, but like if you're critting that much, they're just going to immediately drop below 80%. Now, the level 3 talents look really cool. Sky Fury Totem with 5 HP. I don't know if they're going to change that, but 5 HP is absolutely nothing. But it increases the crit effect of all your damage and healing effects. I don't know if it's AoE or you specific, but if it's AoE, that's absolutely nuts. <laughs> The Lava Tongue Totem looks weird. It's basically like you drop it down next to another enemy, like maybe a healer somewhere. And then, I think you can move totems around, I'm not sure. But when you deal damage to people, it'll deal damage to anyone else around the totem too. So if someone's just hiding behind a barrier, you can basically force them out. Or force them to move anyway. This is a totem that basically AoE enchants allies weapons. And you have a chance to hit, again, another auto attack. Looks meh. Depends on how hard you actually auto attack. Next tier is about healing. So whenever you purge a target, you're, whenever you purge a target or whenever you are dispelled, you are healed for eight percent of your total HP. This is definitely going to get changed. If you can spam purge as much as you can now, this is absolutely going to get changed. Or they're just going to make it cost a bunch of maelstrom, like thirty maelstrom, just to do one purge or something, because that's insane. While in Ghost Wolf, you heal three percent every two seconds. Pretty cool. If you Ghost Wolf and get out of there and like get around a corner and let it just take a little bit, not bad. When you cast Healing Surge, you were healed again for the same amount three seconds later. Pretty good, I think, because Healing Surge actually costs Maelstrom now, and it increases the amount of healing you do based on how much Maelstrom is actually spent. So if you can get healed twice for that, that's pretty good. Fourth Lightning. When you when you Storm Strike, you conjure bolts of lightning to two furthest enemies within 40 yards. I don't think this one is viable in PvP, because if somebody's in a CC that can break, you might accidentally break it, because it's not something you can control. I mean, you can, you just gotta position yourself like a god while in ghost wolf you generate five males from every two seconds i can see how this can be useful but at the same time you can't be sitting in ghost wolf if you want to be using your abilities when you use lightning bolt on an enemy outside of melee range you gain 15 percent maelstrom pretty cool definitely viable this one's interesting your bloodlust spell now has a 45 second cooldown but only affects you and your friendly target when cast for 10 seconds that's pretty cool you get a ton of haste for 10 seconds every 45 seconds and you can do it on two people i think your, your friendly target, so maybe only one other person. When you Storm Strike, you enchant ally weapons within blah blah blah, increasing attack speed by 8%. That's pretty good. Again, it's one of those things that buff allies. I love that you can buff allies, it's so cool. You call down bolts of lightning, charging your you and your target's weapon for the next 10 seconds, you and your target's cooldowns cool up 1% faster. Now, if this is legitimately 1%, this may not actually be worth it, because 1% really ain't nothing at all on a 45 second cooldown, but if that can be increased, that sounds incredible. Now, like I said, these are very, these are spec specific. So if I change them up like this, it's all different stuff. And it's absolutely worth looking into. I will link both the talent calculator and the PVP talent calculator for you to look at. And I highly recommend going through it and looking at each thing. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you're as excited for Legion as I am. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show. Have a good one. RNG butt.